At the Mori Detective Agency, Wakata brings the sushi that Kogura ordered after a profitable assignment. Whereas Ran goes to bring tea, Wakata notices that Conan isn't there. Kogoro explains that Conan got a call from the detective boys, who said they were going to accompany their teachers, Sumiko Kobayashi and Rumi Wakasa, to a tournament to support an acquaintance. As a result, Conan immediately rushed off to join them. Wakata inquires details about this tournament. Kogoro says it takes place in the West Topia building in Haido City, and that's where that Western Shogi is played. Wakada understands what Kogoro means, a chess tournament. Wakada recalls about a moment from the past that is looking at Koji Haneda's corpse. Meanwhile, in West Topia, the acquaintance turns out to be Ninzaburo Shiratori. Kobayashi gives her boyfriend a keychain with a white knight for good luck. She tells him to carry the knight close to his heart and protect the queen with it. Annoyed, Conan and Hibara realize that Kobayashi Sensei has no idea about chess, since of course the king has to be protected. Ayumi wonders if the knight is strong. Mitsuhiko retorts that the knight in chess can move diagonally like the knight in shogi, but in all directions. Genta then says that the knight must be the strongest piece, but Hibara explains that the queen is even stronger since she can move freely horizontally, diagonally, and vertically. So the queen does not need to be protected in chess, she is the one protecting other characters. Now Rumi joins the conversation and wants to know how Hibara knows so much about chess and whether her parents might have taught her. Hibara replies that her parents died shortly after she was born. Rumi asks if Hibara might have taught herself then, to which Conan is quick to point out that Hibara learned chess from Professor Agasa. Rumi is satisfied with that, and Conan mentally says that it was right to come here immediately and not to leave Hibara alone with Rumi Sensei. The participants of the chess tournament talked to Conan and the others. Each had different jinxes for winning chess. Then the first round of the competition started. Detective Shiratori's opponent turns out to be director Kuroda Hiyoe of the Metropolitan Police Department. Later, Shiratori was defeated by an in less than 30 minutes. One of the reasons was the existence of the ringtone of Amazing Grace that resounded at the match venue. Kuroda introduces himself to Kobayashi Sensei since he doesn't know her yet. On the other hand, he already knows Rumi, says Kuroda. Rumi confirms this and recalls their meeting at the campsite. But Kuroda retorts that he thinks he met Rumi before at another chess tournament. In the background, a scene from Kuroda's memories can be seen of how he, as a younger man, walks past Amanda Hughes in a hotel corridor, who is accompanied by Rumi. Rumi also remembers, but says that Kuroda must be wrong. An incident occurs in which a chess participant is killed with the help of a bogan. Inspector Megure of the Metropolitan Police Department also arrived, and the on-site inspection began. Based on the situation at the scene, chess tournament participants Kinji Ugawara, Kunikazu Kazaki, and Kurumi Shiroi. Detectives started questioning each suspect about what they were doing after the match. Conan notices that Knight's keychain has blood on it. Seeing the knight, Hiyoe Kuroda's memories got triggered, revealing the situation in which Amanda Hughes was lying down on the table and died with blood flowing from her mouth as if she had fallen asleep. And in front of her was a piece of a knight, whose eyes were smeared with blood, with a watch placed around it. Also, there were lip marks on the dial of the watch, and it was clearly a dying message. Meanwhile, a black Rolls Royce pulls up in front of the building, one of the side windows rolls down and smoke rises from the car. Inside is Rum, smoking a cigar and gazing towards the building with a grin. After the case was resolved, everyone was about to leave, and Kuroda said he would borrow Conan to ask him something. Rumi is cautious about the security camera. Wakata's men hacked the lobby monitor, saw the detective team and Wakasa and others, and photographed the photo of Wakasa. Wakata orders to send the photo to Kianti and Korn, saying that suspicious must be punished. Kuroda showed Conan the photo evidence of the incident 17 years ago. Kuroda thought that from the death message just now, Conan should be know the meaning. Conan said that he just heard from Shinichi just now, but if he told Shinichi the details, he might be able to see something. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button before continuing. Also, let me know what your thoughts are. The case was excellent while also being predictable, but I never anticipated the conclusion. For now, this instance refutes two theories. First off, Rumi is Vermouth, and Kuroda is Sutomu. 
Honestly, I want Rumi to be vermouth. In this way, things will go beyond the imagination of the readers. Anyway, let's discuss the storyline now. Indeed her walking with Amanda seems to have settled that she is Asaka. But here are things I'm still questioning until further clarifications. Why insist on a dark suit jacket for Wakasa in both her flashbacks? The one with Sutomo and the one from 17 years ago, instead of the light-colored one shown in the Asaka photo, which is in line with Kuroda's attire in the current flashback and PSB agent's attire generally, it seemed Wakasa's work uniform consisted of dark jackets not light ones. It struck me directly that Wakasa's hair doesn't even reach her shoulders in both flashbacks and is clearly shorter and more coarse compared to Asaka's hair in the uploaded photo. Asaka's ponytail is longer, clearly goes past the shoulders, and is less coarse. Why keep the name Wakasa if Rumi doesn't want to be linked with the Asaka name nowadays? We shall see if those are merely artistic choices or have deeper explanations. Regarding the case from 17 years ago, here are some ideas, not really a theory, but kind of brainstorming. If Kuroda went to a foreign country as a police agent for a mission, then most likely he went with colleagues, subordinates, at least one, to supervise their work, back them up if necessary. Koji's killer have trouble knocking him out instantly, so I don't think Wakasa or Iori killed Koji. Those two are shown to knock out people with a single move, no time for a person without fighting skills to even analyze the move and try to block it, so I suspect Vermouth disguised as Amanda killed Koji. Wakata could be Koji's killer, but as observed by many readers, he is portrayed as someone who came after the murder. If we follow the dying message, Rum is indeed the killer of Amanda. Amanda and Wakata have some kind of deal. I think Amanda did meet and talk with Wakata about a business and played chess. This is how the Karasuma name was brought in the case 17 years ago. Wakasa could be Asaka or she was simply there as a CIA agent replacing Asaka, whom Amanda may have assigned to accompany someone else, Koji or Rum maybe. Amanda dismissed Asaka entirely that day for some reason or under someone's request, advice for example, because the differences between Asaka in the uploaded photo and Wakasa in both her flashbacks, the hair and clothes, are not to ignore, seeing that Gosho Aoyama have kept Amanda as she looked in her uploaded photo. Wakasa and Wakata seems to not have encountered each other in the past, Wakata at least does not seem to, he even wonders why would she look at him the way she did when he saw her in Titan Elementary, in the other hand, I don't think Amanda would have met with Wakata without protection, so a bodyguard was most likely with her. If Vermouth has disguised as Amanda at some point, then the one walking with Wakasa was Vermouth or real Amanda. And why did she give Kuroda that look? How was Amanda able to leave such a dying message without the killer noticing it? It is highly unlikely that the killer would leave before confirming her death especially if they were black organization member unless there has been an unexpected occurrence that made the killer leave quickly before confirming Amanda's death. It is possible also that someone else left the chessboard message and not Amanda, but why? Possibly the person who left that message wanted to hint to the culprit culprits without being pulled into the case, so they used dead Amanda as intermediate. In Amuro's recollection of the 17 years ago case file, the Japanese police seems to not mention Amanda leaving a dying message despite Kuroda seeing it on the scene, there was no mention of Asaka either. Does the message incriminate someone who is innocent? Maybe Asaka who was a fellow Japanese policeman. It is interesting that in the current case Shiratori is being treated as a suspect. Maybe a similar situation happened to a police agent 17 years ago, with Kuroda presence too. Wakada's aesthetic look appears to have remained unchanged. Wakada, I suppose, is only a disguise to conceal his true identity. Despite this, he is the second in command. A mysterious halt in aging is also a possibility, but Gosho Aoyama has provided far too many evidence for a disguise. So, if Wakata is wearing a disguise, what is Rum's true identity?